All right, welcome to this episode on The Bench. I'm your host, Nick Smith. Today, we're talking about green screens and the TriCaster. And to make it all happen, I brought in my good friend and TriCaster aficionado, Mr. JT. Thank you, thank you. All right, glad right. to have you here. Okay, now if you did catch our last episode, now's a good time to go watch it because it'll help you understand the green screen side of this. As today, we dive into the TriCaster right. to show you how to put it all together. So let's put TriCaster on the bench and see what's inside. Okay, we're back. So, JT, we're going to talk a little bit about green screen. What does it take to make it work well? Or chroma well? key. Chroma key, very good. Okay. In case anybody's wondering, it's also referred to the scientific term is chroma, chroma king, but most everybody knows it as green screen because that's the color of most walls that you use. So, now, moving on. So, things that are important in chroma keying or green screening. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's talk a little bit about the TriCaster, what makes it work so well for this. Okay. So um, first, green screening. What does it take to be successful with a green screen? The most important thing you want to kick in consideration is lighting. Lighting is key in this particular case. Ooh, nice. You like that one? Yeah, yes, I thought you right, like Okay, so with that being said, it's important to have a well-balanced lit uh, green screen or chroma screen um, and make sure it's slightly diffused. And that's essential to keep it nice and even. Okay, so then yeah. to get the shadows off there, right? Absolutely, yes. Um, and make sure that the colors don't change with the shadows. Now, in order to, to get the shadows off, there's something else we can do with the talent too, right? Absolutely. You know, putting the most distance, the farther distance you can have from the green screen and the talent, the better. Because um, what that was is one that just prevents lighting from bouncing off the green screen and bouncing on the talent. Or their shadow getting on the That's screen. important yeah, as well, okay. yeah, yeah. So lighting's really important. Um, and then the screen itself, and we talked about this in the last episode with Draper, is a smooth screen, no wrinkles, straight. Um, all those things help to make it easier. It's important. It's yeah. essential because it avoids all those artifacts you get in green screen, which is what makes it inefficient. Yeah. Those artifacts on the green screen kind of takes away from the audience's attention span. So yeah. you want a nice clean green. You don't want the green screen with the little jaggies around the person's oh, no, head. No. Yeah. Or the little, little flakes yeah. kicking in it. <laughs> all right. So the green screen right. is yes. only half the story, right? Sure. The other yes. half, which yes. is one of my favorites, is... The, you know, the device you use to actually capture the image and turn it into something fun. And for us, it's the TriCaster TC1. Mm -hmm. um, and we love our TriCaster, it does some amazing things. So let's talk about one, how they make it easy to live mat, as they call it, inside mm -hmm. the TriCaster. Yes, yeah, so, so what you basically do is decide what input you want to actually live mat, because each input can be live matted individually. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to get that particular shot. And then what you do is go in into the settings and uh, basically activate live mat feature inside of that particular channel. Um, once you do that, you can go in there and kind of tweak it a little bit. It has a static green screen, but you can grab the eyedropper, for instance, and pick your green. So if your color's slightly off, you can make adjustments to it. Yes. That give it. And then they have something called a tolerance level yes. that allows to fix it if it's off even right. more, right? Right, because the thing is the lighting. You know, yeah. most often the lighting is not perfect. You're going to have those little artifacts. And that's the most challenging part of green screen. So they give you a tool inside the TriCaster to let you just slightly widen that color space, if you will. Got it. Yes. Makes yes. it makes better green screens all around. Okay, so yes. now that we've got the green, you know, kind of pulled out and we've got our solo subject... Now here's where the real fun begins, right? And they have all kinds of tools for adding backgrounds, but their best one is... Live sets. Live sets. Yes, live sets. Okay, so talk to me about live sets. Live sets are virtual environments. You can take a particular talent, particular off a channel coming in, set it on the screen, and bam, you just put them in a virtual space. Nice. Yes. Okay, now they've got all kinds of virtual sets already built in, mm -hmm. you know, on there. And you can, you know, one thing I like about it is, is you don't, you can make one camera look like many. You're correct. Different angles in the live set by moving it virtually on the set. Right, because they allow you to composite that particular shot in a virtual space. Nice. Yes, yes. That's beautiful. And then we talked about this a little earlier about the ability to remove portions of the set and maybe have another camera shot or other content coming in it so it might be looking out a window and the windows behind the talent right that adds production value and that realism to that particular environment those are viewership you know so yeah and that's in the production value is the most important thing because oftentimes when we're talking to a high school that wants to do their own show or a you know a corporation that wants to present their own you know, event it's about adding pro production value well, to it, that it, creating and that environment for the yeah. for the audience you yeah. always got to push your audience first what do they want to see yeah. so you have that virtual space so you can add those extra elements to yeah. gain that extra interest into protectable. Well, and it just takes the production value up it and makes it, you know, look like they're in this amazing expensive facility and, and they're really, in a whole studio like this. Or a right? closet, if you will. Well, yeah. That's all good. <laughs> okay, so you're going to go show us how to do some of this. Yes. So you're going to jump back on the TriCaster, show us how to set up a key, how to add some different elements and, and how easy it is to Please. utilize the TriCaster. Yes. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going to set up the green screen and we're going to get going on this. Yeah. 
Okay, to set up your live chroma key is pretty straightforward in the TriCaster. Um, you inside your session, you'll decide which input you want to activate live mat on. Once you've decided that, you'll take your uh, cursor and just hover over that input. That will present you with the gear icon. Um, if you left select the gear icon, that'll take you into your input configuration tool. You'll tab over to the live mat. Um, in that particular panel, you'll select enable live mat. And once you see, you see the chroma channel for that particular input has been activated. Um, as you can see in this particular shot, the, uh, the input's not quite dialed, so we'll take the eyedropper. So you'll left click over the color space and just kind of select a, a general color tone you want to chroma key out. That's a pretty close match. Um, if there was some artifacts in this particular shot, you will come over to the tolerance and just slightly adjust it. I'm going to go a little extreme so you can see what that does in the background. What that does is kind of open up that particular, widen that color space that's being chromaed out. Um, if there's some hard edging on the particular talent, you can adjust the smoothness just to kind of just clean up the shot just a little bit. And I'm going to redial this in for you. Kind of put this space right here because there's a lot of shadowing. But that's a pretty nice tight shot. So once you enable that, there you go, the talent's chroma key. Okay, so once you have that all set up, you'll most likely want to place them in an environment. So to do that, you will go into your mix effects bus. Um, select which mix of us you want to utilize. In this particular case, the TC1S4, we're going to select ME1. Um, and we're just doing a basic two layer uh, alpha channel setup in this virtual environment. Uh, you have two layers, alpha channel A and alpha channel B. In the bus, you'll just select which source you want to be in A. A is the foreground. In this particular case, it's the talent. And then B is the background. So, um, let's go ahead and put them in, realizing our DDR to place some footage. So we just instantly place the talent um, in an environment. Um, a lot of times you want to get more creative in your production. Uh, the live sets is an awesome tool to, to utilize inside the TriCaster. So you will come over to a separate ME bus and create a virtual environment. In this case, we're going to use ME3. We're going to take that to preview so you can preview what that looks like. Inside this particular virtual set, we have uh, three alpha channel layers. One is the talent, as you can see here in the foreground. Then B and C is uh, the two monitors left or right of the talent. Um, inside this particular virtual set space, we can kind of zoom in and create our shots pretty straightforward and just decide which video feed we want to go into the various layers. Okay, so once we got that set up, that's a basic overview of the various spaces you can utilize a live mat in. <laughs> All right, that was <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. For uh, that. You're welcome, sure. Okay, so for more information on TriCasters or more tips and tricks, subscribe to our channel and get future episodes and go look at some of our past ones. If you don't have a TriCaster yet or you're interested in getting training on one, go to our webpage and click on the contact us form. We'll get out and more information on how you can get a trainer like JT or one of our other staff members out to help you with your TriCaster. All right, that's our episode today and we'll see you on the next episode of On the Bench. On the Bench. On the Bench. Yeah, there we go.